I've summed up my 10 takeaways and thoughts about this book in this video. I highly recommend you to read the original book of the author. Fundamental Analysis for Beginners by AZ Penn is an insightful book that serves as a perfect guide for anyone who wants to learn the basics of fundamental analysis. The book explains how investors use fundamental analysis to evaluate a company's financial health and its prospects for future growth. The book is written in a simple and easy to understand language that makes it accessible to readers of all levels. It begins by defining the concept of fundamental analysis and explaining its importance in investing. It also highlights the key differences between fundamental analysis and other methods of stock analysis, such as technical analysis. The author then proceeds to discuss the various components of fundamental analysis. This includes analyzing financial statements such as income statements, balance sheets, and cash flow statements. The book also covers the different ratios and metrics that investors use to evaluate a company's financial health such as price-to-earnings ratio, debt-to-equity ratio, and return on equity. One of the strengths of the book is that it uses real-world examples to illustrate the concepts discussed. This makes it easy for readers to understand how the principles of fundamental analysis can be applied in practical situations. For instance, the book provides examples of how to use fundamental analysis to evaluate companies in different industries, such as technology, healthcare, and finance. Another valuable aspect of the book is that it covers some of the common pitfalls that investors should avoid when using fundamental analysis. For example, the book warns against relying too heavily on a single metric or ratio when evaluating a company. It also cautions against ignoring macroeconomic factors that can impact a company's performance. Overall, Fundamental Analysis for Beginners by AZ Penn is an excellent resource for anyone who wants to learn the basics of fundamental analysis. It is a well-written and easy-to-understand guide that covers all the essential components of fundamental analysis. Whether you're a beginner investor or an experienced trader, this book is definitely worth a read. Point 1 emphasizes the importance of fundamental analysis in evaluating a company's financial health and future prospects. In essence, Fundamental analysis is a method of analyzing a company's financial statements to determine the value of its stock. By examining a company's financial statements, investors can gain insight into its current financial health, growth potential, and long-term sustainability. Fundamental analysis is considered a more reliable method of stock analysis compared to other methods, such as technical analysis, which relies on charts and graphs to predict stock prices. The reason for this is that fundamental analysis is based on hard data and facts, rather than speculation or emotions. It provides a more accurate picture of a company's financial health, which is crucial for making informed investment decisions. In fundamental analysis, investors examine a range of financial statements, including income statements, balance sheets, and cash flow statements. These statements provide a comprehensive overview of a company's financial position and performance over a period of time. By analyzing these statements, investors can identify trends and patterns that may indicate a company's future growth potential or financial challenges. The key ratios and metrics used in fundamental analysis, such as price-to-earnings ratio, debt-to-equity ratio, and return on equity, provide further insights into a company's financial health. These ratios are used to compare a company's performance against its peers in the same industry or sector. By comparing these ratios, investors can determine whether a company is undervalued or overvalued relative to its competitors. Overall, fundamental analysis is a critical tool for investors looking to make informed investment decisions. By examining a company's financial statements, ratios, and metrics, investors can determine whether a company is a good investment opportunity or not. While it may take some time to become proficient in fundamental analysis, it is a skill that is well worth developing for anyone looking to invest in the stock market. Point 2 highlights that fundamental analysis involves analyzing a company's financial statements to determine its financial health and future prospects. 
Financial statements are documents that provide a summary of a company's financial performance, including its revenues, expenses, profits, and losses, over a specific period of time. There are three main types of financial statements that investors examine in fundamental analysis, the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. The income statement shows a company's revenues, expenses, and net income or loss over a period of time, usually a quarter or a year. This statement provides an overview of a company's profitability, including its gross profit, operating profit, and net profit. The balance sheet provides a snapshot of a company's financial position at a particular point in time. It shows the company's assets, liabilities, and equity. Assets include items such as cash, inventory, and property, while liabilities include debts and obligations that the company owes to others. Equity represents the value of the company that belongs to shareholders. The cash flow statement shows how cash flows into and out of a company over a period of time. It provides information on a company's operating cash flow, investing cash flow, and financing cash flow. Operating cash flow shows the cash generated by a company's operations, while investing cash flow shows the cash used to invest in capital expenditures such as property, plant, and equipment. Financing cash flow shows the cash used to pay dividends, buy back shares, or pay off debt. By analyzing these financial statements, investors can gain a comprehensive understanding of a company's financial health and future prospects. They can identify potential red flags, such as declining revenues or rising debt levels, that may indicate a company's financial challenges. They can also identify opportunities, such as high growth potential or undervalued assets, that may indicate a company's future success. In summary, financial statements are an essential tool in fundamental analysis. By examining a company's income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement, investors can gain valuable insights into a company's financial health and future prospects. These insights can help investors make informed investment decisions and achieve their financial goals. Point 3 highlights that fundamental analysis involves using key ratios and metrics to evaluate a company's financial health. These ratios and metrics help investors compare a company's financial performance to its peers and assess whether the company is a good investment opportunity. One of the most commonly used ratios in fundamental analysis is the price to earnings PE ratio. The PE ratio measures the relationship between a company's stock price and its earnings per share. A high PE ratio may indicate that the market expects the company's earnings to grow in the future, while a low PE ratio may indicate that the market expects lower earnings growth. However, it is important to note that a high PE ratio does not necessarily mean that a company's stock is overvalued or that a low PE ratio means that it is undervalued. Another important ratio used in fundamental analysis is the debt to equity ratio. This ratio measures the amount of debt a company has compared to its equity. A high debt to equity ratio may indicate that the company is relying heavily on debt to finance its operations, which can be a red flag for investors. However, a low debt to equity ratio may indicate that the company is not taking advantage of opportunities to grow its business. Return on equity, ROE, is another important metric used in fundamental analysis. ROE measures a company's profitability by showing how much profit it generates from the money invested by shareholders. A high ROE indicates that the company is using its resources effectively to generate profits, while a low ROE may indicate that the company is not making the most of its resources. Other ratios and metrics used in fundamental analysis include the price-to-sales ratio, the dividend yield, and the earnings per share growth rate. These ratios and metrics can provide valuable insights into a company's financial health, but it is important to use them in conjunction with other factors when evaluating a company. In summary, key ratios and metrics are important tools in fundamental analysis. They help investors compare a company's financial performance to its peers and assess whether the company is a good investment opportunity. However, 
It is important to use these ratios and metrics in conjunction with other factors when evaluating a company's financial health and future prospects. Point 4 notes that fundamental analysis is different from other methods of stock analysis, such as technical analysis. While both methods aim to help investors make informed investment decisions, they differ in their approach and the type of data they use. Fundamental analysis focuses on examining a company's financial statements, ratios, and metrics to evaluate its financial health and future prospects. The method is based on the idea that a company's stock price should reflect its underlying value, which can be determined by analyzing its financial performance. Fundamental analysis aims to identify companies that are undervalued or overvalued in the market, based on their financial performance and growth potential. Technical analysis, on the other hand, focuses on analyzing stock price movements and chart patterns to predict future price movements. The method is based on the idea that stock prices move in patterns and that these patterns can be used to predict future price movements. Technical analysts use charts and graphs to identify trends and patterns in stock prices, which they use to predict future price movements. One of the key differences between fundamental and technical analysis is the type of data used. Fundamental analysis relies on hard data, such as financial statements and ratios, while technical analysis relies on historical stock price data and chart patterns. Another key difference is the time horizon. Fundamental analysis is typically used by long-term investors who are interested in a company's financial health over a period of years, while technical analysis is used by short-term traders who are interested in price movements over a period of days or weeks. While both methods have their strengths and weaknesses, many investors believe that fundamental analysis is a more reliable method of stock analysis because it is based on hard data and financial performance rather than speculation or emotions. However, some investors use a combination of both methods to make informed investment decisions. In summary, fundamental analysis and technical analysis are two different methods of stock analysis. While fundamental analysis focuses on examining a company's financial statements and metrics to evaluate its financial health and growth potential, technical analysis focuses on analyzing stock price movements and chart patterns to predict future price movements. Investors can use a combination of both methods to make informed investment decisions. Point 5 states that the book Fundamental Analysis for Beginners by AZ Penn uses real-world examples to illustrate the concepts discussed, making it easy for readers to understand how the principles of fundamental analysis can be applied in practical situations. Using real-world examples is an effective way to teach complex concepts because it helps readers relate to the material and understand how it applies to the real world. The book provides examples of how fundamental analysis can be applied to evaluate companies in different industries, such as technology, healthcare, and finance. For example, the book might use a technology company like Apple as an example to illustrate the principles of fundamental analysis. The book might show how to analyze Apple's financial statements, ratios, and metrics to evaluate its financial health and growth potential. The book might also explain how macroeconomic factors, such as changes in interest rates or global economic conditions, can impact Apple's performance. By using real-world examples, the book helps readers understand how the principles of fundamental analysis can be applied in practical situations. It also helps readers see the relevance of these concepts to the real world, which can motivate them to learn more. Furthermore, the book uses clear and concise language to explain these concepts, making it easy for readers of all levels to understand. The book also provides exercises and quizzes to help readers test their understanding of the material. Overall, using real-world examples is an effective way to teach complex concepts, especially in a subject like fundamental analysis. By providing examples of how fundamental analysis can be applied in practical situations, the book helps readers understand the relevance of these concepts to the real world. The use of clear and concise language further enhances the book's accessibility and readability. Point 6 notes that Fundamental Analysis for Beginners 
by AZ Penn covers how to use fundamental analysis to evaluate companies in different industries. This is important because different industries have unique characteristics and metrics that investors need to consider when analyzing a company's financial performance. For example, a healthcare company may have different revenue streams and expenses compared to a technology company. Investors need to be aware of these differences and adjust their analysis accordingly. In the healthcare industry, investors may focus on metrics such as revenue growth, research and development expenses, and clinical trial results. In the technology industry, investors may focus on metrics such as innovation, market share, and intellectual property. The book provides examples of how fundamental analysis can be applied to evaluate companies in different industries. For instance, the book may use a pharmaceutical company like Pfizer as an example to illustrate how fundamental analysis can be used to evaluate healthcare companies. The book may show how to analyze Pfizer's financial statements, ratios, and metrics to evaluate its financial health and growth potential. The book may also explain how regulatory changes and patent expirations can impact a pharmaceutical company's performance. Similarly, the book may use a technology company like Microsoft as an example to illustrate how fundamental analysis can be used to evaluate technology companies. The book may show how to analyze Microsoft's financial statements, ratios, and metrics to evaluate its financial health and growth potential. The book may also explain how competition and technological innovation can impact a technology company's performance. Overall, the book's coverage of different industries is important because it helps readers understand how to adjust their analysis based on the unique characteristics of each industry. By providing examples of how fundamental analysis can be applied in different industries, the book prepares readers to analyze a wide range of companies and make informed investment decisions. Point 7 emphasizes the importance of avoiding reliance on a single metric or ratio when evaluating a company in fundamental analysis. This is because a company's financial health is complex and cannot be fully captured by a single metric or ratio. Investors need to consider multiple factors when evaluating a company's financial health and growth potential. For example, a company may have a high P-E ratio, indicating that it is overvalued, but this may be due to its high growth potential. On the other hand, a company with a low P-E ratio may be undervalued, but it may be facing challenges that are not captured by the ratio. In addition, different metrics and ratios may be more relevant for different industries or types of companies. For example, the price-to-sales ratio may be more relevant for a company that is not yet profitable, while the price-to-earnings ratio may be more relevant for a company that is already generating profits. Furthermore, different ratios and metrics may have different strengths and weaknesses. For example, the debt-to-equity ratio may be a useful indicator of a company's financial leverage, but it may not capture the full picture of a company's financial health. Therefore, investors should use multiple metrics and ratios when evaluating a company's financial health and growth potential. By considering multiple factors, investors can get a more comprehensive understanding of a company's financial health and make informed investment decisions. In summary, Point 7 emphasizes the importance of avoiding reliance on a single metric or ratio when evaluating a company in fundamental analysis. Investors need to consider multiple factors, including different metrics and ratios, to get a comprehensive understanding of a company's financial health and growth potential. By doing so, investors can make informed investment decisions and avoid potential pitfalls. Point 8 highlights that Fundamental Analysis for Beginners by AZ Penn covers how to evaluate a company's management team as part of the fundamental analysis process. The management team plays a critical role in a company's success, and investors need to evaluate their track record and leadership style when making investment decisions. One way to evaluate a company's management team is to look at their past performance. This includes analyzing their track record of executing on the company's strategy and delivering on financial targets. 
Investors can also look at the management team's experience and expertise in the industry and their ability to manage risks and navigate challenges. Another way to evaluate a company's management team is to look at their leadership style and corporate culture. This includes analyzing how the management team communicates with employees, shareholders, and other stakeholders. Investors can also look at the management team's approach to corporate governance, including their policies on executive compensation and board independence. In addition, the book may cover how to evaluate a company's external stakeholders, such as suppliers, customers, and competitors. These stakeholders can have a significant impact on a company's performance and growth potential, and investors need to consider their relationships with these stakeholders when evaluating a company's financial health. By considering a company's management team and external stakeholders, as part of the fundamental analysis process, investors can get a more comprehensive understanding of a company's financial health and growth potential. A strong management team and positive relationships with external stakeholders can be key indicators of a company's future success, while weaknesses in these areas can be red flags for investors. Overall, evaluating a company's management team and external stakeholders is an important part of the fundamental analysis process. The book provides readers with the tools and techniques needed to assess these factors and make informed investment decisions. By considering these factors alongside traditional financial metrics and ratios, investors can get a more comprehensive understanding of a company's financial health and growth potential. Thank you for your interest in this book. Please leave your feedback on these thoughts in the comments below, or just put a like on this video. It will help me stay motivated and make more videos like this. In the description of this video, you may find links where you can purchase this book.